morning's uh, scripture reading is uh, Psalms 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of your trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember you, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord, our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the King answer us when we call.
weeks ago, I was thinking about the Lord's Supper, and uh, it dawned on me that the uh, Jews, ever since Jesus started teaching um, his personal ministry and uh, and healing the sick and and all doing all the good things, the Jews were jealous of him because they had departed from what God had taught had told him to do, and so they considered Jesus as a threat to him, to them. And so at different times they sought to kill him, but they weren't able to. Uh, they, they were afraid to because of the, all, most of the people believed that Jesus was from the Son of God, was from, uh, from God, and so they, they didn't get around to uh, killing him like they would. And so they finally made a deal with uh, um, uh, Judas for 30 pieces of silver that he would betray him because he knew that he would be at a certain place at a certain time. And so uh, it was on uh, at, when they had come to eat the Passover that Jesus introduced the apostles to the Lord's Supper. And he said, do this in memory of me. And so it's important that we remember Jesus whenever we partake of the Lord's Supper and at all times for that matter. But the thing that I was, thought was important that it was at the feast of the Passover. And I don't much think that many of us think much about the feast of the Passover or what it even means. And so I want to try to quick, uh, take a quick trip back and, and refresh your memory on the feast of the Passover. And we'll start back with Genesis 12, uh, when God first spoke to Abraham. Uh, Abram at the time, his name had not been changed to Abraham at that time. He said, he spoke to Abraham and said, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and go into a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse them that curse thee and through thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now let us remember that because I believe this is God was making reference to Jesus when he said through the sea, through Abraham, all the seeds of the earth, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And so uh, at that time, uh, Abra Abram, and later God changed the name to Abraham, did not have any uh, children, but God said he will make your name great, make of thee a great nation. But when Abraham was 100 years old, God uh, gave Isaac to uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah for their first son. And then Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau, and Esau was the firstborn, but because Jacob, with the help of his mother, was a little deceiving, and they deceived uh, Isaac into giving the birthright to Jacob. And so Jacob became the head of the children of Israel. Ch uh, Jacob had 12 sons, and they were <coughs> uh, uh, in, the, in the land of Canaan, and they... Uh, uh, Joseph was his son. Joseph was a, a righteous young man, and, uh, and and Jacob made a coat of many color, colors and gave to him. And then Joseph had a dream, and he dreamed that uh, they were all he and his brothers were out in harvesting grain and said that Joseph's sheaves raised up 
and all the other sheaves come down and bowed down to him. And this made his brothers envious of him and jealous of him. And they thought about killing him, but they decided to sell him uh, as a slave into Egypt. Some people that were going to Egypt sent him as a slave. And so when Joseph got to Egypt, he uh, uh, was put in prison, but Pharaoh had a dream and nobody could interpret the dream, but finally one uh, so, uh, told him about uh, Joseph that could interpret dreams. They learned that he could interpret dreams. And so Joseph came and, and interpreted the dream for Pharaoh and said there's going to be seven years of plenty and then there was going to be seven years of drought. And they needed to save uh, uh, for the fir first seven years, to store it up and have it so it would have plenty for the drought. And so uh, Joseph suggested to Pharaoh that he appoint a wise person to do that. And so Pharaoh just appointed uh, Joseph to do it. And so Joseph became head uh, of of Egypt there, and and his father and brothers and their families was in a drought in Canaan, and so they come down to Egypt to try to get uh, food, and um, and they realized that it was Joseph was head, and they were scared that he was going to take vengeance on them, but Joseph didn't. And so uh, Joseph, with the uh, consent of Pharaoh, brought the children of Israel, Jacob and his household, which was 70 souls, uh, down to Egypt. But then after Joseph died and, and, and years passed, uh, a Pharaoh come up that didn't know Joseph. And so they, the Egyptians began to persecute the uh, uh, the Israelis and they in effect made slaves out of them and uh, uh, they uh, uh, was afraid of them because they multiplied so great and so the, the, the Israelis cried unto God and he heard their prayers and so God brought up Moses to and Aaron to bring it to deliver them out of uh, the hands of the Egyptians, but Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. And so God kept putting plagues on Pharaoh, plagues on Pharaoh, uh, and he put uh, nine plagues on them and they still refused to let them go. But when God decided to do something, uh, we can't, there's nothing that we can do about it. God has the final word. <clears throat> and so God told the Israelis for them to get a, a lamb uh, uh, that without blemish and to kill it and to take the blood and put it on the doorpost and, and, and to eat the rest of it and then be prepared to travel whenever they uh, that in the morning when they f had finished eating and uh, God sent a death angel over Egypt to kill every one of the firstborn of the families of the animals, the livestock and everything that did not have the blood on the post and so with that, when that happened Pharaoh and the Egyptians decided, y'all get on out of here. They wanted them to go because uh, there was too much. They couldn't stand the punishment there. And so the children of Israel left uh, Egypt and started to the promised land. And God uh, told them at that time to remember this day, the day of the, of the Passover, the feast of the Passover, uh, forever and that's what they were, were remembering at when Jesus uh, introduced the Lord's Supper to uh, 
to the children of Israel then and to us today. And that's, I thought it would be, it's important for us to remember that the greatest sacrifice that we remember from God to God's people was the feast of the Passover. And then Jesus is the one that will bring blessing to all nations, as God told Abram in, in Genesis uh, 12, uh, the 12th chapter. Uh, at this time, we will remember what Jesus told us to do to partake of the Lord's Supper. Let us bow while we give thanks for the bread. Our Father, which art in heaven, we're so thankful to you that you saw fit to give your Son for us that we might have life, have forgiveness of our sins, and have hope of life everlasting. We pray that you will forgive our sins and bless us as we partake of this bread in memory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give thanks for the cup. Our Father, we thank you for this cup, which is to us the blood that Jesus gave on the cross for our sins. May we ever remember the sacrifice that he gave and that we might remember what he has taught us to do, that we should live our life in a way that is pleasing in your sight, loving God and loving our neighbor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's now saying sanctuary. Lord, prepare me. Sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, teach your children to stop the Thank you. 